Welcome back to Mental Math. Here's a question that looks innocent, but it's about to reveal something subtle about complex numbers. Does the square root of negative 1 times negative 1 equal the square root of negative 1, all squared? At first glance, you might think they should be the same. Let's see what actually happens. Let's start by working through the left side. We've got the square root of negative 1 times negative 1. Order of operations tells us to handle what's inside the radical first. And negative 1 times negative 1 gives us positive 1. Now we take the square root of 1, which is just 1. So the left side gives us 1. Now let's look at the right side. Here we're squaring the square root of negative 1. First, we need to deal with what's inside these parentheses. The square root of negative 1 isn't a real number, so we define the imaginary unit i to be exactly that, the square root of negative 1. So we can replace the square root of negative 1 with i. Now we have i squared. What does that equal? Well, by definition, i squared equals negative 1. So the right side gives us negative 1. So what do we have? The left side equals 1, but the right side equals negative 1. So 1 doesn't equal negative 1. But the real question is, why did we get different answers? The answer lies in a rule we all learned, but with a condition most of us probably forgot. You've probably seen this. The square root of a times b equals the square root of a times the square root of b. But here's the catch. This only works when a and b are both non-negative. Let's see what happens when we ignore this and apply the rule anyway. If we split this radical across the product, we get the square root of negative, 1 times the square root of negative 1. Now let's work with the right side using our definition of i. Each square root of negative 1 becomes i, and i times i is just i squared, so we have i squared which, remember, equals negative 1, so we'd get negative 1. But wait, we already know the left side equals positive 1. So if we put that in, we'd be saying 1 equals negative 1, which is obviously nonsense. The mistake was that step where we split the radical. That move simply isn't legal when we're dealing with negative numbers. So what's the takeaway? First. Order of operations matters. Always simplify what's inside the radical before you do anything else. And second, that rule about splitting square roots only works for non-negative numbers. It's a reminder that in math, seemingly simple rules often come with important conditions attached. Thanks for watching. If this kind of thing interests you, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe.